Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, should be a cracking match. Really looking forward to this one. Jack Whelan with his trademark big break gets us underway and come to you straight away, Chris. We heard from Gareth in, in the studio. Get your thoughts on this match and where it might be won and lost. Well, it's quite a funny one because if you look at the way Jordan's got to the semi-final, you, you would never bet on him to be in this situation because he was 4-0 down his first match and half and had so many chances to, to actually win the game. And then he was down in his second match, but seems to be getting better and better. But Jack seems to have the consistency. He's not, he's not really played a bad match. He's, he's played really well. So for me, you have to put Jack Whelan, the slight favourite, but we all know how dangerous Jordan Shepherd is. Yeah, Jordan's had a couple of moments. His, his match against Aaron Davies, he was breathtaking for a, a sort of six or seven frame burst. Very similar story against Tom Ford. But you feel against Jack Whelan, he, he may need to put it together for a little bit longer or maybe have to do it via a six red shootout, which he's more than capable of doing. But Jack Whelan looks like he's played at such a consistent level throughout the tournament that it's going to be tough to beat him two sets to nil. The way that Jack's playing and the way that, more importantly, that Jack's breaking. I mean, you've been out there firsthand. His, his break has is, is been very much on. Yeah, for me, his break's been unbelievable. He's, he's not really got a great deal to do when he's breaking well because he's, he's maybe putting three and four balls every break. Needs to be a little bit careful with his next shot may choose to just drop off the top cushion and just pass the yellow leaving the longer distance red or could screw off two cushions the problem with that is it may slide down the table well, that makes this final ball very difficult indeed yeah he's got to play this one a little a little harder Send the cue ball back across twice for the eight ball in the opposite corner pocket. Oh, right in the heart of the pocket. Beautiful shot from Jack Whelan. And Jack Whelan gets us underway with an excellent break and clearance. We'll see plenty of them in this match. It's not a successful one. He won't be happy with that. Oh, clearly not happy with it. Yeah, Jordan's not one to uh, hide his emotions. He's doing a better job of hiding them now than he ever has, mind. Do you know what really surprises me about Jordan? And there's not many players I've ever seen do it. How he, he visualises a shot with the glasses what he wears yeah because for me you must see the frame when you're playing the shot he's actually looking over the top of the frame he doesn't actually look it through the glasses yeah it's amazing how, how well he pots the ball he's one of the best players on the planet we all know how cruel this game can be sometimes you can be sat in that chair and you may not play a shot for around five or six frames. That's where you need to be mentally strong and prepared to take that opportunity when it does present itself because it can change matches, especially at the level that you guys play at because you're all capable of putting together these runs that can turn a match around. Nice little control that cannon there from Jack. Knew that the other yellow would sit over the centre pocket. Just depends which way he wants to go. He's got a choice of all four yellows. If he can pot this yellow and just play a soft little screw back onto the yellow, not too hard, he'd be guaranteed a shot. That's about perfect. <coughs> Jack wouldn't mind playing this plant and even making both balls. He's got a straight screw back for the eight ball, but they want to leave this low side of the pocket after planting it. Well, it's just okay. He's got an easy connection for the eight ball. That's 
should allow him just to drift through the gap. Two nil, two chances, two clearances, one break, one reverse. Oh. Very close to a golden duck. That eight ball was very, very close to the right centre pocket. Very unfortunate with the cue ball, kicked into the top left hand corner. But look at this eight ball. Jack's looking at the eight ball, breathes a sigh of relief, but. It will still be Jordan Shepard at the table with cue ball in hand anywhere behind the break line and an opportunity to get going in the match. Yeah, and Jordan definitely has to take the reds. Is he a little short or is that okay? Well, I'm a little bit surprised there that Jordan didn't play the red that he's playing now to the bottom left-hand corner pocket with ball in hand and develop his red. He would have been on the red that he's just potted. Oh, he was okay for the cannon, but not for the pot, as our finalist in waiting. Sean Storey is waiting for the winner of the, this match. Yeah, and I find that quite strange that Sean's in the final, he's sat in the arena watching. He, he, he's always around the venue watching the game. He's often, even if he goes out and has a, a practice session, he'll quite often have the game on on his phone and he'll be watching along maybe even with earphones in keeping keeping half an eye on it he's a big big fan of the game as well as being one of the best players in the game every player is obviously completely different I, it's just me personally i wouldn't be doing that i'd be sat in either my hotel room waiting or just in the players lounge yeah just just relaxing and I don't think he'll stay out there all the whole way through, but keeping an eye on it, eye on it for now. Well, did Jack try and pot the red over the pocket? I think he did. That would have in turn given him a chance to run these balls out, but the more yellows that Jack pots, the tougher this clearance is going to be. Is he looking at the double? The problem we've got in playing the double, if he tries to knock his bad yellow out that's next to the centre pocket, he has to land on that ball. Well, he's clipping off it and putting the red. Could be a clever shot. Very good shot from Jack Whelan. Excellent shot there. Covered the red with the yellow. Potted his opponent's red and left the cue ball tight on the top cushion. Absolutely key to cover that red with the yellow he was playing because he was going to be leaving half chances down the table. And he knew that. Yeah, what does Jordan do here? It's so difficult for him to get in any kind of angle, really, to get on that red. I'm sure he'll find something. He may play the double if he gets a chance, but this, this first red is very difficult. Excellent shot there. Brilliant cueing from Jordan. Didn't look like missing. And this is where he's going to ask himself the question, do I play the double, which is what he's looking at there, or do I leave an angle on the next red to spin the cue ball and try and land on it? I think he's got to play for the double. has and that's another clever shot just by using that third rail he's now left himself I do believe a perfect double this is all about the pace if he hits this too hard the red will go above the middle if he hits it soft it could go below the middle it's all about the pace of the shot this one is it it perfect great double cue ball is there as well so as good a shot as Jack Whelan played to tie things up. Jordan Shepard, he is up to the task in making the clearance at the second opportunity, and he is finally on the board here. Change of break immediately. 
Didn't like the cut break after one break, so goes front ball and hits it like a dream. Just last couple of balls tied up. The eight ball in the triangle area. Yeah, he's been a little bit unlucky there because the eight ball was available until this last red came down and settled on top of it. Making this clearance a little bit more trickier. The red above the black does go in the left hand centre pocket once he removes the red that's in the way. I think this is a correct shot come across for the opposite red in the opposite top pocket. Well, he's not hit it. And he needs to get rid of the red that is to the left of the eight ball, just above it to the left of the eight ball. He needs to get rid of that very early. Otherwise, this clearance is going to become very tricky. Well, he's missed the red. He's missed that by quite some distance. And the only problem for Jack is the eight ball. But he does have a yellow next to it, so plenty of option for moving it. That was a bad miss. These errors we're seeing from Jordan, and okay, there's only two in the match so far. But the reason I raised the, the point is that it, it just doesn't look like Jordan Shepard when he's making mistakes like that. And he's done that all the way through the tournament. And he's found these runs to turn matches and sets around. But you won't want to keep making those sort of errors. You're always going to make mistakes out there. But it's almost the, the, the simple errors that are very surprising. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I don't think I've ever seen Jordan make so many errors in, a, in one tournament. You could possibly count on one hand how many errors like that that he makes in a season. the klaxon there but clearly played the shot in time so all good certainly with the, the clock anyway maybe not with the cannon I'm not sure that's what he was after yeah that was a very bad shot there from Jack I don't think he really knew what to do on that one so obviously with the clock running down he had to play it quick he's gonna have to pot this and come round the back of the red I believe just leave a, a longer yellow for his next shot say where does that eight ball go desperately needs an angle he'd love to be able to pot this yellow maybe with a bit of right hand spin leave the yellow that's closest to it in the middle and just drop them in and flick the red that's next to the eight ball if he can do that then he has a chance there's a good chance he may snooker himself playing this one he's okay it's what hampered queuing but he has opened up the eight ball and he does have a shot it is awkward but you saw the way it came out he's jumped around the table so I think he's happy with the chance he has well the way he's queuing you expect him to point but this is this is really difficult Yeah, and if he was just rolling that in, it would be one thing. But he's having to manipulate it with spin as well. That was very, very difficult. Yeah, when you're playing that kind of shot, if you impart any kind of side spin on the cue ball, it'll throw the white wide <coughs> and you will miss a pot. Well, Jordan's playing safe. You don't see this very often. Yeah, mark it down. No, he's not. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's not. I cannot believe he's gone for the double there. He had an opportunity to pot the long red and stun it, and he's definitely on one of the other reds. I think he threw everything after that one, and I can't agree with that shot from Jordan. Yeah, I like you thought he was playing safe because he was playing that one. You can come off it, you're bumping that into play, and you've got a big target behind the, the cluster on the bottom cushion. Yeah, he put all his eggs in one basket there, did Jordan, and don't get me wrong, if it goes in, we're sat here saying what a great shot, but as an aggressive person as he is, I think that was the wrong shot.
Well, could have been 2-2. In the end, it's not. It's 3-1. Just massive explosion when he hits it, but it's dry. Yeah. Wow, he says. I agree, Jack. That's as good as you can hit them. Look at that cue ball right up the middle of the table. Well, I do agree, but I think that's the first time in about 15 breaks that he's not made one. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes they, they're not always going to go in, Jack. Of thinking to be done here for Jordan. Fairly even split across the table. Nice little flick there. That was a delightful flick. He'd love to be able to pot the red in the middle here. Red in the corner and then possibly play one of the two reds that are together off the other yellow opposite. That will then in turn open the pocket up. The only problem with this is got to pot three balls for that to happen. And normally you want to go into it as early as you possibly can, but you can't always do that. Looks like he agrees with your assessment. Well, even if he doesn't play it off the yellow, he's still going to get an opportunity to clear up and land on that ball. I think you have to play it off the yellow now. I don't think really you've got much choice with the angle that he's got. Doesn't have to hit this hard, just has to flick the yellow. Oof, and that's landed horrible. And that's why I said he had to play it slow. Because the yellow is always coming back across and now he's going to have to pot this and take a long red into the top left hand corner. Yellow's making it very awkward. Also not the best of angles. Accepted what he had though. Just dropped it in. Sign of a man who's uh, very confident. There's lots of players there would have tried to get perfect position where yeah. Jordan's very similar to myself where I'd just rather give myself a shot. Yeah, rather than just dropping it in, you're trying to force it up to take this red into the centre pocket instead, make it as easy as possible. But... He got really nicely on that into the corner, and this becomes a very good last ball as well. First clearance off the break for Jordan Shepherd in the match. It won't be his last. Look at that huge, oh, eight balls tracking for a second. Wow, just look at them yellows. One tough yellow. It does, does have to be a little bit careful. I think if you can just drop the yellow in the center pocket and just softly cannon, I have the red that's on the line in the middle of the table. That in turn will give him perfect position. He could also cannon the yellow that's just above the line. And tie up to Jordan what he plays. Well, it's not bad, but it's not great. Well, the reason it's not great now, I think he has to pot this yellow that he's to the left of the cue ball and go up the table <coughs> and play the yellow that's alone. Yellow nearest the cue ball right now could become the, the problem. That's right Simon and that's why I think he had to play for this one. Yeah, his pattern's not being great here. I'm just wondering, can can he top spin this yellow in with a lot of right hand spin and two cushions bring the cue ball over for the yellow past the yellow that's hanging over the corner pocket? Almost try to get middle of the brake line sort of line down the table. Yeah, that's what he's doing. 
He's on it, but it's not ideal. He would back him to pot this, but he has missed an easier one than this early in this match. Can he get the cue ball nicely as well? I suppose he doesn't have to do too much with the other yellow down there. Yeah, he's guaranteed perfect position, but straight in the heart of the pocket. Oh, beautiful shot. Perfect angle. Just wants to make sure he's not dead straight on the yellow, just a little angle, so he'll play this with a touch of right hand spin. That's perfect. Well, we can't pick a winner at the moment, Simon. No, both players are looking good now. And they're all square at 3-3. Three, three. A couple of clearances off the break apiece. Jack Whelan started with two. Jordan Shepard has just done two back-to-back -back himself. And a couple of frames where they both had opportunities Last two breaks from Jack have gone awry. Not through his own fault, though. Eight ball. Golden break. In it flies. And the last two breaks may not have gone his way. This one absolutely does. Watch this eight ball. When does he see it? Well, let's give him... Give him zero out of ten for the celebration, but the, the result is a frame on the board. Jordan has had his in the tournament as well. In dramatic moments, he actually got him a half a point in his opening set against Tom Ford. So these are the things you have to deal with out there. Well, this might as well have been a golden break because them reds are absolute sitters. You definitely have a bet on this that Jordan won't miss these. Jordan wants to leave a little angle after putting this on the yellow to the uh, sorry on the red to the centre pocket and land on the red that's next to the yellow on the left hand side of the table. And that's just about perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Just wants to glide down the table slowly. Try and land on the red next to the yellow. Well, he's not played for it. He must have had too much angle. I think he was worried that if he played on that one, then getting to the bottom right-hand corner of the table may have proved slightly tricky. For me, he should have played for the red, but we'll let Jordan decide because this has now become tough. Can he pot this and just glance the eight ball? No. Nope. And that is why I would have played to glance the eight ball. If you glance the eight ball, you're absolutely perfect on the reds. Now he has to play a double. He's very good at the doubles, so I expect him to get it, but... He's got to get the position right as well. Which he has on both ends. Excellent shot from Jordan Shepard. Yeah, and Jack will be fuming in his chair there. He was probably thinking he was getting back to the table. Once again, same thing as he's done previously in the match. Just accepting what he had. Didn't try and get too good on the eight ball. Just drop that in. Accept what you have. And no mistakes with the eight ball. Another clearance from the break for Jordan Shepard. And we're back all square. This time at 4-4. Four, four. No movement on the eight ball this time but he has made a ball and one that would tease Jordan Shepard there. You just saw him out your corner of his eye. Watch on the replay here. He thinks it's going to be dry and he's just about get, to get ready and get up and look at what he's got to go at. There he goes. Oh, sit down, Jordan. 
Yeah, Jordan. Jordan won't be too happy about that. I think Jack has a choice of which ones he wants to go for. Not quite sure at first glance if you can pot a yellow. Well, they obviously can. They're definitely the balls. Well, when playing this plant, he'd love a little angle on the red that's the yellow that's next to the two, just so he can screw into the red. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Well, having a very good look at the way these three are laid out in the bottom. Wants to open it all up in this shot here. Yeah, wasn't taking any chances there of leaving that red close to the yellows. Doesn't have a great deal to do from here now. All the yellows connect and could be looking at a 5-4 lead to Jack Whelan. Confirming his margin of error here, where he wants to be, how far he can go. <coughs> Nicely played there from Jack. Just about perfect. On the yellow to the centre pocket. Natural angle to go up for his last yellow. Just needs to leave an angle to get back for the eight ball. Well, he didn't want to leave that angle. He can, he can manoeuvre the cue ball quite easy, but he'd love to have an half ball on that yellow. And he could have played around the back of the reds and guaranteed to be on the eight ball. This could go wrong. Similar to. Jordan Shepard just accepting what he had, screws into the red, holds the cue ball, had to make sure he didn't catch that red thin on either side, where it could have gone wrong. And it is this eight ball to go in front once again. Right in the heart of the pocket for Jack Whelan. And Jordan oh, I hit these so well. Deserved a ball, makes a ball. Tricky. One red on the table. He needs to deal with. Yeah, he'd love to be able to play the plant on the red now. Not sure if it goes. Maybe the other plank goes. Well, I'll take that. Especially if you can pop the red over the corner and screw into the yellow to develop it. Tried to come off the cushion, grazed by rather than developing it, and now that ball is going to become a problem. Yeah, and he's, he's, he has had a little result really because he can pot this red past the other red in the corner and maybe go two cushions and just flick the red out. The reason I say that is if he flicks it on the way past off one cushion, it may not be on anything. Well, he's not even attempted it. Why is Jordan Shepard looking at here? Was he trying to hold it a little shorter and maybe have the angle to go into it from the one in the open? Looks too straight now. Well, the only thing he can do is pot this screw the white to the top cushion and play the double into the corner pocket. And 
it's not. nowhere near that one. It's been the problem ball right from the start. Cannot solve it. What does Jordan Shepard do here? This is awful. Can he clip off the left hand side of the red and play the cue ball three cushions in behind the yellow at the bottom? Well, there's no point in playing that shot because Jack Whelan is just going to pot Jordan's red with the yellow that's next to the cue ball and leave him stuck behind the other yellow. Yeah, Jordan Shepard knows that. I think it was a situation that Jordan had looked at it for a while and was coming up blank with ideas. Can he play this two cushions just below the centre pocket? Maybe pot the red in the centre pocket. That's about his only chance, really. Needs to let the cue ball do the work here. Good effort. Not the worst result. Yeah, it could have left a lot easier on than this. <laughs> and that reaction from Jack Whelan tells us he knows that. And you heard our referee, Patricia Murphy, just mentioned that we are at 15 seconds a shot for the final 9 minutes 35 seconds now. Things are going to happen quickly out there from here. Well, Jordan has a chance. And this is probably the best one out of the last two shots he's played, but this table is going to slide like crazy. He could, he could miss this red completely, but if he pots it, I think he'll be on the eight ball. He's potted it, but so is he potted the oh, cue ball. Well. Wow. Disaster. That is so unlucky. I mean, yes, it could be travelling down at the corner, but to pot it at that kind of way, he couldn't have played it any better. That is so unlucky. Well, Jack Whelan had no choice but to take a risk and lay that snooker, but... He'll be very relieved to see the cue ball go in. And now an opportunity to go too clear. A key moment in this match. Big, big frame in the context of things. 6-4 or 5-all. Yeah, Jack keeps getting himself in front and being pegged back, but two clear, three to play, seven minutes on the clock. Great place to be. But we all know what Jordan's done against Mick Hill. I think he ran about four or five racks in about eight minutes. Yeah, he's turned that one around from, from the brink. There is time left on the clock. It's just whether he gets the opportunities to be able to turn it around. Jack Whelan, Whelan will be breaking next. Yeah, and it'd be interesting to see if Jack actually hits a hard break or just plays it softly and tries and ties the balls up basically just so that Jordan can't clear up very quickly. Then big break for potential set and he's going to get the opportunity for that huge break wow look at them yellows this first set is over yeah Jack Willen came round very quickly just to check whether that eight ball goes into the top left hand corner pocket all the yellows are wide open well, Jack's pattern is stunned the yellow in, stunned the yellow in the middle. And he's, he's going to want to leave the yellow that's next to the eight ball. That's going to be his last ball. And his second to last ball is going to be the yellow that's over the left-hand side middle pocket. So for me, Jack pots the yellow that's closest to the cue ball now. With the one in the bottom right-hand corner. Yellow in the centre, yellow in the centre and a straight shot on the eight ball. Well, the clock's got to him. He wanted to play that, and the clock's got to him. 
Yeah, he was about to go for a wonder and realised he couldn't. Is that why they call him the wonder? Is that the why, yeah. <laughs> he isn't going to affect him, though. Still in perfect shape here. Yeah, the, these was unmissable for somebody like Jack. Yeah, I'm glad you added that extra line. It is exactly what he wanted to see. And the first set is on the board for Jack Whelan. A fan fantastic 35 minutes of pool there. Both players playing their part. Plenty of drama, plenty of quality along the way. We've reset the match clock. Another 40 minutes, another race to seven frames. Jordan Shepard has to win it. Or to take us to a six-road shootout, or Jack Whelan will be into the Pro Cup final to take on Sean Story. I stopped in my tracks there because I thought the eight ball was going to go in for a second. It stays on the table and leaves a fairly messy layout here for Jordan to try and work out. Jordan can play a nice little safety here if he sees a shot. Just roll into the yellow, split the red away and leave the cue ball right next to it. It is a little bit dangerous, so may choose to try and develop it at a later point. That's not gone to plan. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what he was trying to do there. I think he feels a little disheartened that he didn't have an easier chance after that good break. And the more Jordan pots these yellows, the more difficult it's going to be for him to clear up. Well, it doesn't exactly hand over the table to an inviting layout here for Jack Whelan either. This is going to be a messy opening frame. The way that Jack Whelan's playing and the level that he's breaking at, you just feel that, especially with this being off a Jordan Shepard break, a hugely important frame here. It was very early in this set, but when you look at the statistics of the opening set, you know, Jack Whelan had three break clearances and a golden break. You know, he's, he's very dangerous off his own break, and it, it's hard to turn anything around. If he was to get himself in front, it'd be tough for Jordan to come back. Well, Jordan's just going to put this yellow over the pocket and leave the cue ball on top of the red. Just like that. Doesn't want it to be touching. That was touching. That would have been a disaster for Jordan. Well, he still did try and take that yellow off the table. Hasn't managed to do so, though. Difficult when... You've got a feather off your ball to do it. Now, if Jordan looks at this table now, he can actually roll the yellow to the top jaw and leave him glued on the eight ball. And that will leave the yellow for his next shot to develop the bad yellow. Yeah, you feel that with that shot, Jordan Shepard is edging himself in front here. Yes, uh, for me, Jordan's favourite for this frame at the moment in time. Simply because most of the yellows are in the open and Jack's looking to play the red onto the yellow as soon as he can. But Jordan's not giving him a chance to do it. Attention. Attention call. What, what does Jordan do here though? I think it helps if he brushed off the one he's next to, just trying to block the one at the bottom of the table and make Jack have to play a red at the top of the table. It's hard for him then to play safe from it. Yeah, I think I think that's the only thing he can do. Is he trying to play this off the eight ball in the centre pocket? Well, that was aggressive. Yeah, that's for me, that's just now lost him that frame. Jack's just 
going to play the red onto the yellow in the top corner pocket. Leave the cue ball next to the yellow. Should I say the two yellows together? He doesn't want to leave the cue ball touching ball though. Well, decided against it. I think you're going to see Jordan give these a smash. Way Jack played that, he was trying to get behind the red. He's next to. Double kiss hurt him. Still hasn't left anything on. Can Jordan go up and down and plant the yellow over the corner pocket? I don't know if that cue ball's touching on the red. But he's in deep trouble. You're going to see Jack probably put the yellow, uh, sorry, the red over the eight ball pocket. Well, he's decided against it. Gets a very good snooker. He's still going to have work, if, even if he was to get cue ball in hand here. But two visits ago, we felt Jordan was in front in this tactical exchange. He looks a mile behind right now. And it will be cue ball in hand for Jack Whelan. Okay, so Jordan, a foul's been called and Jordan just wants that to be checked. He thinks he hit his yellow on the way through. I didn't think he did in, in real time, is my feel. So our referee, Prisha Murphy, will come and have a look at that when we see a replay. <coughs> so watch the yellow. How close to the yellow does he get here? Doesn't look like he touches it to me. I'm not sure if you're seeing anything there, Chris. No, I'm, uh, I'm not convinced he hit that. No, he was just questioning it. Patricia Murphy has checked, agrees with our assessment, and Jack Whelan will have a cue ball in hand. Still has a problem to solve, but can give himself the perfect angle to try and solve it. Well, can you believe what you've just seen? Ball in hand, and he's missed. Wow. Well, that was incredible. That really was hard to hard to believe. I think Jack Whelan will be in complete and utter shock right now. Actually makes this a very big moment for Jordan to try and use that, because it's not easy from here, but make it hurt. Well, Jack had an opportunity where he could have played the red at the top end of the table over the pocket and snookered him again. That would give him then the insurance should he get ball in hand. Jordan was in all kinds of trouble there. I do think no matter what though, Simon, no matter what happens, even if the video replay shows that he's used his extension, Jordan still has to play the next shot. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I just think common sense says even if even if he had used it, he was granted a, an extra one. It should be it should absolutely be Jordan Shepherd just to play the next shot. And time is now running, so we are back where we were. Jordan Shepherd is at the table and the shot clock, and there is no outcome to the to the debate. It will be Jordan Shepherd with uh, with the next shot. Nice little positional shot there from Jordan. Just needs to be a little bit careful here. Doesn't want to overscrew this. <laughs> no, 
Nice little shot there from Jordan. I think the black goes comfortably past the red. Well, a very strange opening frame. Just about eight minutes of action. Everything else was not necessary or oh, that important. But that will not make Jack Whelan feel any better at all. Yeah, and Jack's going to feel aggrieved by what's happened. And then that happens. Yeah, he, I, I get why he will, and I, I know that I probably feel the same way in his, but Jordan hasn't actually done anything wrong. The frame had gone on a long time. You, you, you can lose track of whether you've used it or not in that sort of frame. And it's, it's an error, but it's not an error from, from Jordan Shepard that should be penalised in any way, because it's not an error from Jordan. And, it, and you are right, Chris, because it, it wouldn't have made any difference if, if he knew he didn't have an extension because it was there visible or it wasn't granted. He would have had no issues clearing those up anyway. So on we go. Jordan Shepard, though, an opportunity here to, to really make it hurt Jack Whelan. Yeah, I think somebody's going to uh, be 20 pounds short in the pay packet tonight. <laughs> This is, this is really going to hurt Jack Whelan because he had ball in hand, then the extension happened and he breaks and gets kicked straight in the corner pocket. By the pool gods turning on Jack Whelan. It's up to Sheppy to keep it going and keep it hurting. And he's done a very good job of it there. Excellent reverse clearance. And these will come out absolute sitters. Or even a golden, or even a golden break. Wow. Wow, that's pulled up just about in time from a Jack Whelan perspective. Interested to see Jack's face as this is tracking. And Jordan doesn't have, well, he does have an easy red. It's hanging over the corner pocket, and he's he's got to go reds. Probably play the plant after this. Could do with landing straight though on this plant. Oh, he's turned. I think the cue ball's turned. Wow, everything is happening in this match. <coughs> Eight ball nearly drops in the corner. Cue ball turns off. What more can happen? Yeah, that was uh, not what Jordan wanted to see, especially with what's just happened over the previous two frames. You keep your opponent down as long as possible. Make Jack think about that. And now he has the opportunity to forget about it. Get back on that front foot. The plant, the way that Jack's just played it, wanting to be straight on it so that he could hold on it was the reason that Jordan Shepard played his first shot so slowly. He wanted to be able to do the same thing himself. <coughs> yeah, Jack will be delighted to uh, get a frame on the board because this for all money looked like it was going to be 3-0. Jordan almost started walking back to his chair with the eight ball in. He thought it was going to drop. Yeah, just one more revolution on the eight ball. Well, 2 1 it is. That well, it is finally on the board in this set. Why does the table have to slightly turn? 
But he did have to play it dead weight, and when you play them shots, it can happen. Oh, just for a second, I thought it was going to be Jack Whelan with the golden break. But doesn't go in, but other balls do. Nice break there from Jack, but not had the best of rewards. No, that left-hand side looks pretty grim. It's half helped. Yeah, it's not the worst result. He can pot this red in the bottom left-hand corner and play a soft screw into the other red. Well, he's decided to roll it. Nice shot there from Jack. He's just a little bit too straight. He can pot this and screw off the edge of the yellow what he's next to now. And he'll definitely be on one of the reds. You just have to make sure you pot this clean. You don't want to be hitting this into the into the yellow or the rail. It has to be a clean pot. Perfect. Yeah, very nice indeed. I think Jack's just a little bit worried that he doesn't really want to play the red up the cushion last. But I don't think he's got much option. Needs to be dead straight on the red up the, up the cushion. And he is, and he's very nice and close to it as well. I mean, he doesn't have to overhit this at all. Sure, he wasn't short on that one, and that was the right shot to play. Break clearance from Jack Whelan to tie the scores up. So, a rather chaotic start. What's he got for us this time? A dry one. Yeah, and you, you knew it was going to happen. These things always happen after you make silly mistakes. And again, absolute dream layout for Jack Whelan. Yeah, pretty much as good as it gets. No clusters, no balls even near cushions. Everything wide open here. sort of layout where Jordan would almost rather just let Jack have it and get on with the next frame. It's never that easy, but it's not far off. Yeah, I've actually seen players do that in matches. Yeah, doesn't sit, seem right or sit, sit well with me that at all. But that's how he'd be feeling. Well, I'm a firm believer that you should always let your opponent clear up because, you know, you could get a bad contact, you could get a, a roll off, anything could happen. But obviously, if you give if you give him the game, then none yeah. of that can happen. Yeah, well, look at the ball that Jack Wheeler missed in, in frame two. I mean, that's as easy a ball as he's ever missed in his whole career. It can happen. It only takes one slightly loose shot to suddenly make the next one tricky and so on and so forth and these relatively simple finishes can get out of control
but this one never looked likely that that was going to happen. There must be a level of frustration inside. Eight ball was flying again, this time not looking too dangerous, but other balls have flown in. How did the cue ball not go in? It looked for all money that that was going to drop. Yeah, it looked like it was a few ways of it being kicked in as well. Dangerously close for Jack Whelan. A rarity when that happens. One obvious problem at the bottom end of the table to have to think about here. Not sure he has an opener on yellow, so... Can he play yellow onto red onto yellow? That would be definitely a shot if he can play it. Oh, he's seen it. Great spot. You have to pot the colour you're going for, therefore you cannot just play the red-yellow plant. But because he's playing the yellow, he can play the yellow-red plant. That was excellent vision. And what looked like it could become a problem ball is no more. Well, Jack needs an angle because he has to develop one of them yellows. If he can pot the yellow closest to him, just run the cue ball through about six inches. He'll have a perfect angle then. Two ball plant follows the, the three ball. Yeah, just needs to be a bit careful here. If it's this yellow thick, it could end up safe next to the red. This is all about pace. Well, it's not the end of the world, but it's not great. It's still a very awkward ball. I think he has to take the yellow in the corner pocket and screw back. <coughs> then play the yellow in the middle. That's nearest the eight ball. But he's deciding against it. He's seen something else. Yeah. You can clip the yellow back. The cue ball looks like it's going to go close to into the other yellow. That's going to knock the red potentially towards the, the eight ball, but this isn't guaranteed to come out well. Even if he doesn't pot the eight ball, there's every chance that a yellow doesn't go on. Yeah, he's got to get the yellow to the cushion. Didn't like that shot. It may still go, but I didn't really like that shot. Well, he jumps around the table. This goes. It's tight, but it does go. Well, you know full well, if it doesn't, it had been playing the double by now. It must be tight. Very difficult to see from this angle. Oh, it goes easy. Yeah, his, his initial reaction was to, to sort of jump up to the top end of the table. If it was that tight, I believe he would have kept looking from the bottom end. Well, oh, it's definitely tight now. He can't see it. I don't understand why he's not screwed that ball back, though. You know, Jack's got a lot of cue power, and he's such a brilliant pot. I mean, why play it like that? I do not know. Oh, this frame's all of a sudden got very interesting and maybe just enough gap to play the red to the top right, which could open everything up for Jordan in a few shots time or a visit or two's time. I thought he potted the eight ball for a second. Well, for me, Jordan here just pots the red in the centre and doubles his other red that's on the top cushion. Unless that goes past the eight ball... Yeah, I think uh, I think it might. Right, it won't matter now. He is going to play your first first thought and just bump it out. Well, he needs to be careful here because even if he snookers him, Jack can go up and down and hit that yellow. If Jack goes up and down and hits that yellow and gets it in front of the reds, Jordan's going to be in trouble. And that is a very bad shot from Jordan. He's left the edge of the yellow, and Jack's going to just tip this off. In front of the Reds, that's a poor shot there. I think the Red must go, and he was so conscious of not bouncing the Red too high at the table. He's taken a little bit of a risk. Well, that's no good. Jack wanted that yellow to go in front of the Red, and I think he's left an open table now. Well, we've had it all in this set, Simon. Yeah, very bizarre 
something is happening out there. Yeah, Jordan has nothing at all to do here. Jack will be quite frustrated. I'm surprised Jordan's not playing the, the red. Yeah, the one that's over the pocket. I think you have to play that now. Stun the ball dead, it leaves you a perfect opportunity to come down the table for the one where he's queuing from. I think that might be a situation where he sort of came down the table and then changed his route when he realised that there's a better way to go. Yeah, I just thought that he doesn't have to do anything with the cue ball, it's all natural. Doesn't have to play with any spin. All square in the second set. Jack Williams still has that one set to nil lead though. It's rare to see you two get there. Well, that cue ball got kicked absolutely everywhere. And that is unbelievable. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? His cue ball's got kicked all over the place there. It's gone from pillar to post. The eight yellows are absolutely sitting. And just look where the cue ball lands. Oh, that is just heartbreaking for Jordan Shepherd. And what there's just nothing you can do here. There's no safety option even. Uh, it's so hard to play anything here. Well, is it touched? Did Trisha just say it was touching? Well, if it's touching, then if it is okay. He can just put the Jack in the same position, and then Jack's maybe got no shot. Yeah, he wants to not have it. Yeah. Uh, Jordan uh, just uh, points out correctly. Patricia Murphy did call touching ball. Just momentarily got that one wrong, but all sorted now. Well, he definitely don't want that one to be touching, and it is. What does Jordan do here? Oh, this is really tough now. This is where I thought he was originally. It's taken two shots to get back to uh, to being in a, a world of hurt. Well, the problem Jordan's got is if the cue ball's touching the cushion, it then has to hit another cushion after contact. Well, went for the three ball plant off the top cushion. That was ambitious, but what else could he try? Yeah, I mean, that is just unbelievably unlucky from Jordan there. Brilliant break. Why he gets kicked everywhere. Yellows are sat perfect. And he's got no shot. And as you said right from the start, Chris, this split on yellows is just <coughs> won't take long. feel this is pretty much the only shot that could go wrong here and there's not much scope for that to happen. No, this is uh, very, very difficult for this to go wrong. Absolutely perfect. Jack Whelan using the clock because he doesn't have a, a lot to do here, just a stun shot to where the key, where he's queuing from there. I think he's just changed his mind. He may well be thinking clock as well, but he was getting down on the one to the right centre pocket and then just caught himself. I thought, well, maybe there's a better way to go about these three, but in truth, you could have gone in it multiple ways and wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, 
and Jack in reality now is going to, in reality, he's going to have a two frame lead because Jordan has to win this match. Big break indeed. Just look at them again. Everything in the open, everything connects. It's unbelievable how many times he's broken these last two matches and he hasn't had a massive amount to do. Obviously he still has to pot them, but... How do you really miss them? Yeah, he, he's fully aware of it. He's fully aware of it when he gets on a run with his break like this. and He has a phenomenal break, he, he really does, but he gets a lot of these sorts of chances. Talks about that when he won the, the world title. Back in 15, he was... Back then it was set play, I think sets to four or five, and he was making two or three of these per set all the way through the tournament, and that gives your opponent very little to go on. Yeah, that's a clever little shot, that is, by Jack. Because he's thinking three shots in front here. He's now going to leave the perfect angle for the yellow of the right and centre and the cue ball will automatically drift down for the yellow closest to the eight ball well that's okay we'll overrun it slightly but <coughs> he'll take it He has to pinch the pocket here in the centre, but it's so close, it shouldn't be a problem to do that. Yeah, for me, I think Jack's been the player of the tournament so far. Consistently played well in every single match. not his best shot, he could have done with the bigger angle than that. I'm not saying he's not going to get on the eight ball, but if he's another four inches up the table, they're unmissable. Oh, he's generated a huge amount of movement with very little angle there. Yeah, that was a nice shot, that. A better shot than it probably needed to be, but because of where he put himself, but be thrilled to get to where he has. Excellent stuff. Jack Whelan, as we go into the 15 seconds, a shot portion of the set gets himself two in front. Oh, it's unlucky again. It is very unlucky again for Jordan Shepherd. Not a surprise to see that reaction. Yeah, look at the yellows again. He's going to pop the one in the corner, play the yellow off the red in the centre. And then every other wall is over the pocket. Well, he's using the clock to his advantage, but you feel like this is going to be 6 3, and I think that's asking a little bit too much from Jordan Shepard. Things aren't going his way. And all this has changed from when he missed. Yeah, that was 2 0 at that moment, it was wasn't it? 3 0. That that shot there felt like like it was 3-0 on the shot itself and ended up being 2-1, changed the whole momentum of the set. Jack would be pleased to see the red go in as well. Not that he necessarily needed that pocket, but didn't want it to be a blocker just in case. Could be the pocket for the eight ball. Perfect from Jack there, just going to stun the yellow in the right hand centre. Roll the yellow in the right hand corner, left hand centre, and the eight ball in the right hand corner. 
His last few racks have been very kind to Jack. He still have to pot the balls, but he does help when they're all in the open. he will just use the clock a fraction even though this will put him 6-3 in front and mean Jordan Shepard has to win four straight frames he's going to take every advantage he's got and once again Jordan Shepard was just about to step out of his chair and maybe have a go at a reverse clearance but the ball finally falls in for Jack Whelan and he has a chance to wrap the match up here and now. Yeah, and just look at them yellows. There, as we call in the poo world, Mary Ploppins. just another layout where it's really hard to see any way that he can go wrong well, the, the hardest shot in the rack is to get on the eight ball I think Jack will probably leave the one over the centre pocket to get to the eight ball choose to just stun this in and play the long yellow just so he's guaranteed the angle but the way he's queuing he's queuing so well he's just had a look at that and he's already up yeah this time clearly in time and he has followed your advice and left the long yellow to give himself the angle to get on the eight ball yeah and this yellow to see Jack Whelan into tonight's final Wow. <laughs> oh, that used it all. It teased Jordan Shepard till the end with this eight ball for a place in the Pro Cup final. Brilliant stuff from Jack Whelan. A brilliant performance. Lots of big finishes, lots of big breaks. And Jack Whelan goes through to the Pro Cup final where he will take on Sean Storey 